Tonight, in Dolly, we trust. Working nine to five. Just a working gal that came from nowhere and really made dreams come true. An entire episode of E.T. devoted to all things Dolly Parton. Not a thing wrong with that. What you never knew about the icon. From her music milestones. I just thought that it was a hit if somebody else would record it. To her movies. This is going in the hairdo hall of fame. And many collabs. She doesn't really let me call her a godmother. She likes fairy godmother much better. Plus, the secrets behind Dolly's signature style. Is it true that you sleep with your makeup on, Dolly? I do. And her 57-year marriage she keeps out of the public eye. I love the old guy. He's the only one I've ever wanted and the only one I'll ever have, I'm sure. Entertainment Tonight presents E.T. Vault Unlocked, Dolly Parton. E.T. starts right now. She can work nine to five and rock a coat of many colors. We're honoring the legend that is Dolly Parton. Welcome everybody to Entertainment Tonight. It is a busy Thanksgiving day for Dolly, so we're opening up the E.T. Vault to celebrate someone who's beloved all around the world because in Dolly we trust. Jolene, Jolene. Everything else that's happened to me has come from the music. I love to write. That's my gift. You were meant to be a songwriter. Well, I don't know how good I am. I got about 3,000 songs. 25 country number one singles, 10 Grammys, over 100 million records sold. Dolly's prolific music career spans eight decades. And today she performed the halftime show at the Dallas Cowboys Thanksgiving Day game. It was my songs, my songwriting that brought me out of the Smoky Mountains and took me all the places I want to go. I wish you love. I Will Always Love You was a, a song that I was real recognized for, and it was one of the, that and Jolene was uh, one of the, well, two of the biggest songs I had ever had. And, uh, but they didn't sell any records. They both only sold like 100,000 copies, which ain't enough to feed my chickens. And I just always thought that song deserved more. I just thought that it was a hit if somebody else would record it. I listened to it and I said, this is the song. This will tie that whole movie together as far as the music is concerned. Whitney's version recorded for The Bodyguard spent 14 weeks at number one and became the best-selling single by a female artist. Whitney did a fabulous job on that. I never had any idea that simple little song of mine could do that, but it, she made it something special. Dolly shared special moments with some of the most iconic artists in the biz, with over 50 collaborations across genres and generations. Oh, but I can easily understand. She doesn't really let me call her a godmother. She likes fairy godmother. I feel like a member of people's family, like an Aunt Dolly or like a you know, like an older sister. Maybe I'm a role model and I hope so. Here you come again. She's a woman who has been successful in everything she's ever done. Just a role model for girls, including myself. Dolly shattered all of those illusions of what a genre and what a boundary was. She's never made any apologies for who she is and that's my favorite kind of artist. From country queen to the silver screen, Hello. Dolly skyrocketed to a new level of stardom when she set her sights on Hollywood. You are evil. That's right, evil to the core. There's no such thing as natural beauty. Get down off the cross, honey. Somebody needs the wood. Did you honestly know you were going to be a star? I believe I did. I, that's what I wanted to do. I always felt that I was supposed to do it because I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be rich. Dolly's breakout role in the 1980 comedy classic 9 to 5 earned her three Golden Globe nominations. And the anthem she penned while filming turned the movie into a movement, earning her the first of two Oscar nominations and two Grammys. Oh, and you just love it, don't you? Working 9 to 5. See, I wrote it to play with my nails. What a way. It meant a lot to me, the fact that it brought attention to all us gals asking for equal pay for equal work, and it has done a lot of good. Dolly scored her second Best Actress Golden Globe nod two years later for the movie musical The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. 
Although it was successful money-wise, it, it, it wasn't really that, you know, that great as far as the critics and everybody was concerned. She bounced back with another female-driven hit, Steel Magnolias. She told E.T. she went to beauty school for the role. This is going in the hairdo hall of fame. Now I'm having to cut everybody's hair. I've become like a beautician in my own family. My husband won't ever let anybody cut his hair again. I've really, I've acted myself into a corner. Throughout her more than 40 years in the business, Dolly's made over 400 TV appearances and starred in over a dozen feature films. I like to think with me, you know, there'll, there'll always be something I can play just because I'm Dolly Parton that's been around for 100 years. And personally, I have been waiting for a nine to five reunion ever since we did the first one. Dolly's reunited with Jane and Lily more than seven times. And when it comes to a reboot. I didn't want to do a sequel myself. It's like I don't like to chew my tobacco but once. We haven't been able to get a script that we were satisfied with. If you don't have the script, you can't start. And we're trying to make it happen uh, before one of us checks out. <laughs> we make jokes now to do a remake of nine to five would be more like 95. With the rise of Dolly's career came her signature style. I'm kind of a cartoon. I'll probably look this way when I'm 100 if, if I live to be that long. Three words to describe my style. Trashy, trashy, trashy. What's your secret? Oh, there's no real secret. Just lots of makeup and good doctors and a good attitude. Everybody knows Dolly wears great big wonderful wigs and tight <laughs> clothes and heavy makeup. Why did you decide to look like you look? I just didn't feel like I was uh, all on the outside that I was on the inside. Dolly shares more in her fashion book, Behind the Seams, My Life in Rhinestones, out now. What's your most prized fashion possession that you would never, ever give up? Shoes. But I always have to have some sort of heel or I can't reach my cabinets. <laughs> your hair is equally as iconic as your as your wardrobe and your costumes, right? As soon as I knew wigs and hair pieces were coming out, I thought, I have been delivered. <laughs> How many wigs do you feel like you have now? I probably have 365 wigs. I don't feel cheap, but I don't mind looking cheap. She doesn't feel cheap because that famous figure costs a pretty penny. I'm no natural beauty. <laughs> well, that's makeup, Botox, and collagen, and other nips and tucks. People always say, oh, you just always seem so happy. I said, that is the Botox. So I heard that you look at your boobs as show dogs or show horses, right? <laughs> and, you say, and you say you have to keep them groomed. Oh, I do. I call these my weapons of mass dis <laughs> distraction. <laughs> Her breasts are so small, they look like melons. <laughs> More secrets about Dolly's aesthetic? Is it true that you sleep with your makeup on, Dolly? I do. I get up in the morning, I clean my face, I do my mask, uh -huh. and I put on fresh makeup. Yeah. But I never, I'm not going to bed, you know, looking like a hag. I just ain't going to do it. I'm just going to be ready in case there's a fire or a flood or a, an emergency. Her beauty routine is surprisingly quick. I do my own makeup. I can be completely ready with everything within an hour, less if need be. Oh, and Miss Dolly almost always keeps her arms and hands covered, oft times wearing these nude gloves. Why? Fans think you have full-fledged slaves. You've got tattoos. Is this true? I do have a few tattoos, but they're mostly to cover some scars from really? surgeries. I just sit in little flowers, some vines, and a butterfly here and there. Like Minnie Pearl says, I mean, any old barn looks better with a little red paint on it. Dolly's husband of 57 years, Carl Dean, may be the only person who's seen her without all that paint. This glamorous Dolly Parton image must have at times been a little intimidating. Not really. He knows how bad I can look. <laughs> the two met outside a laundromat in Nashville in 1964. Dolly was 18 and he was 21. Two years later, they eloped in Georgia. When we got married, Carl put the wedding rings on his mother's serious account. So we paid on that every month. Then years later, I, after we were making some money, I, I lost the little set out of the, the original, and I was just heartbroken. And I thought, oh, how can you ever replace that? Right. So he went back down to Sears and, and bought the stone to replace it and, and paid on it, even though we didn't have to, <laughs> just so it would it kind of still stay like that. For a while, the couple's very private marriage had some fans thinking Carl doesn't really exist. Why is he such a mystery? He's too pretty, I'm afraid, to let him out. <laughs> He's never really photographed a mythic creature at this point. 
he does not want to be um, in pictures. He don't want to be in magazines. He don't want to be Dolly Parton's husband. He wants to be Carl Dean. The camera shy businessman is now retired at 81. And while Dolly became a global superstar, Carl stayed focused on his Tennessee pavement company. We have the greatest relationship because first of all, we're best friends. We really are both very independent people. I need the freedom to work. He needs the freedom to work. I want him to do exactly what makes him happy. In 2015, E.T. was with Dolly, who revealed how they plan to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. We're going to get married again, and we're going to get in our RV and go on a honeymoon. We got all dressed up. He was so handsome, and I had my beautiful gown that I didn't get to do before. And he tells everybody I'm his second <laughs> wife. What's been the key to success? Well, I always joke about it because I stay gone, and there's a lot of truth in that. I love the old guy. He's the only one I've ever wanted and the only one I'll ever have, I'm sure. Well, just keep that on a loop, would you? Because we cannot hear it enough. On stage, it was Kenny, but in real life, come on. Dolly already told us her island in the stream is her hubby Carl. But that doesn't mean Dolly didn't have her Hollywood crushes, too, including one sly rhinestone co-star. You're a self-acknowledged flirt, Dolly. Yeah. Not a thing wrong with that. You've had to work very closely with Sly Stallone. It was such hard work having to work with him every day. <laughs> I went in there with, with a preconceived idea of what Dolly Parton was. And then after our, I spoke with her, I realized she knows exactly what she's doing. She's a poet. I thought, well, I was going to have to try to teach him to sing, but he's already a very good singer. I was very surprised. Dolly got another one of her crushes to croon in 1982's The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, Burt Reynolds. I said, I'll work with you in the acting if you'll just keep me in pitch. Bert, he was like a like a brother also. He was just very, you know, very down home. And we had a good time behind the scenes. And at 77, not even Jolene can keep Dolly away from Tonight Show host Jimmy Fallon. I mean, I it's mutual. I have a crush on Dolly Parton. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Last year, it was Dolly who made the first move by asking Jimmy to sing with her in a holiday duet. Why don't we see how it goes? Jimmy and I always have fun together. The song I just love. And so I love him too. I just want to be remembered as a good hearted person. And I just want to, you know, just say that I've done everything I could with everything I had and tried to do as much good as I can and have as much fun as I can. It really is the beauty of Dolly Parton. She's always looking at a way to pay it forward. It's something she learned growing up with 11 siblings. It also explains Dolly's need to make the world a better place. But you never had children yourself. No. For a reason? When we first got married, I figured we'd have kids. We had names for them, you know, as you do when you're dating and yeah. when you're first married. Yeah. Years went by, and then life caught up, and, you know, we just never got pregnant. But I really honestly believe that some things like that are meant to be because now everybody's kids are mine. I'm the Dolly Mama. I love it. <laughs> the Dolly Mama launched the Imagination Library in 1995. She was inspired by her own dad, who didn't have the opportunity to go to school and learn to read. She opens up about it in the documentary, The Library the Dolly Built. When we got ready to put this program together, I thought, well, I'm going to get Daddy involved for just people like my dad. Their goal was simple, to provide one free book a month to every child age five and under. Nearly 30 years later, it's operating in all 50 states in five different countries. Anybody can get the books. It's not a lot of people think it's just for poor children, but it's for all children. All you got to do is just sign up almost 100 million books that we've given out. I want to be remembered as a, a good person. In your Mother Teresa has said, when I stand before God, I want to be able to say, Lord, I used everything you gave me. Being the book lady is one thing I'm, I'm very proud of. Dolly's Imagination Library started as a small project to benefit her hometown, and she's still investing millions in local education. In my Tennessee mountain home. I've always been proud of this part of the country. The Singers Dollywood Foundation was created in 1988 to benefit the people of Sevier County, Tennessee. And last year, she announced she'd cover 100% of the tuition and books for Dollywood employees who decide to go back to school. 
it's a good feeling to look around Sevier County and see the growth with the hotels and the restaurants and all the new businesses. So it's not just Dollywood that we're proud of, it's this whole area. Dolly became co-owner of the theme park in 1986. Since then, it's estimated to have pumped $1.8 billion into the local economy. These are my people. This is my home. These are the, you know, the woods that I roamed around in as a little kid. Dolly stepped up again in 2016 when the Great Smoky Mountains wildfire devastated the area. E.T. was there as Dolly hosted a telethon which raised $9 million for recovery efforts. All my people are still there. This is very, very personal to me. The Dollywood Foundation also created the My People Fund, which provided $1,000 a month to more than 900 families whose homes were destroyed. I carry East Tennessee along with me everywhere I go, and they kind of hold me in a special place here, too. Today, Dolly's reach is global. Early in the pandemic, she saw an opportunity and donated a million dollars to coronavirus research at Tennessee's Vanderbilt University. They used her gift to develop the Moderna vaccine. Vaccine, 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 vaccine. I'm begging of you, please don't hesitate. I like the fact that I can make a lot of money, but it's just what I can do with it is why I really enjoy making it to be able to share it with other people. In the 90s, she risked her career to bring attention to the war against HIV and AIDS, helping to launch country music's Break the Silence campaign. The move was inspired by her LGBTQ fans. I have a huge gay following. Same and here. I'm proud of them. <laughs> I see so many drag queens out there. <laughs> I see so many girls that look more like me than I do. <laughs> I always believe that people should leave you alone to be who you are. I'm just traveling through. In 2005, she put it all on the line again and received death threats after writing and performing Traveling Through for the film Trans America about a trans woman on a road trip with her long lost son. The song was nominated for an Oscar. I get all the credit, but I have a lot of people working behind the scenes to help me. One of those people is Amazon founder and billionaire Jeff Bezos, who last year granted Dolly his massive Courage and Civility Award, worth $100 million in charitable donations. And it's Dolly who gets to choose where the money goes. I couldn't believe it, first of all. I cried uh, on the phone. I'll be able to do a lot of good for a lot of needy causes and a lot of needy good people. Listen, we can't leave you without celebrating one more Dolly Parton achievement. Adding the title of Dolly the Rock Star. Hello. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Take care, y'all. Marching in the streets with sticks and stones. Don't you ever believe words don't break bones. I'm not even going to record a rock album. I'm doing a lot of classic uh, rock songs. I'm having a lot of icon singers sing with me. Like Elton John, like Paul McCartney, Stevie Nicks, Pink. Miley and Cyrus. Miley, of course. Though she's going rock, Dolly has no plans to tour again. As for what's next, well, it's the same thing she told us back in 1982. I do work hard, but I like to work. And uh, I learned while I was off the road that I will never retire. I, I, I like the work. Ah, that's true, I'll never retire. I feel the same exact way. I love to work.